Hello everybody, welcome to my video about supply and demand shifts. We're going to be looking at a competitive market that starts with this inverse demand curve, P equals 50 minus 2Q, and this inverse supply curve, P equals 3Q. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to decrease the supply curve. You can make up your own story for it if you want to. I didn't. And then we're going to increase the demand curve. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve for three different points. We're going to solve for our initial equilibrium. I'll save that for later. Where the first demand curve and the first supply curve hit each other. We're going to solve for our second one after the supply shift but before the demand shift. And we're going to solve for our third one which is after both curves move. I'm going to make that one red. There we go. So we're going to solve for all three of those equilibrium. And in the process, I'll show you two different ways that the supply curves or demand curves might move. Probably two of the simplest ways. And probably about as much as I'm going to give you in my calculus-free version of this class. So to solve for blue, I want to solve... I want to set my first supply curve equal to my first demand curve. Uh, I guess those are inverse demand curves and supply curves, but you get the idea. So, oops, 3Q equals 50 minus 2Q, 5Q equals 50, Q equals 10. All right, there's our first one. Now let's solve for that price. All we have to do is substitute 10 into either function. I'm going to substitute it into the supply function. So P is equal to 3 times Q, which in this case, 3 times 10 is 30. Perfect. We already got blue. Look how great we are. Now, let's introduce a shift in the market. And let's say supply... Now, let me reward this. Let's say that the quantity supplied falls by two at every price. That's our supply cut. Now, unfortunately for you, it's not so easy as saying, look, the old equilibrium was 10. So the new one should be You can't just subtract two. Don't do that. It will not serve you well. Uh, yeah, we actually have to do some math here. We're going to solve for a new supply curve and see what the new equilibrium is. So let's get our new supply curve. Uh, well, we're changing the quantity, but our supply curve is currently measured in price as a function of quantity. So first thing we got to do is we got to invert it. We know that PS1 is equal to 3QS1, which means 1 over 3 PS1 is equal to QS1. There, now I've got something where Q is a function of P. And so all I have to do, quantity falls by 2 at every price. That means QS2 is equal to QS1. So our new supply curve is equal to our old supply curve minus 2. So that's one third PS minus two. And that is our new supply curve. Right there. So now we can solve for equilibrium, except this is a supply curve, but our demand curve is an inverse demand curve. So I'm going to switch this back around and solve for P again. So one third PS2 is equal to Q plus two. So PS2 is equal to three QS2 plus six. Now I can set them equal to each other. To solve for my green equilibrium, my second one, I'm gonna set PS2 equal to PD1. Because notice, we're looking at where demand curve one 
intersects with supply curve two, and that's how you get this point. So what's that gonna look like? Our first demand curve was 50 minus two Q. Our new supply curve is three Q plus six. Let's see, that's five Q equals 44, Q equals 8.8. .8. Awesome, there's our next step. Got it. Now we need its price. Substitute 8.8 .8 into either function. Let's see, let's do with the new supply function just for fun. One over three, or actually, let's see, P is equal to three times Q 8.8 .8 plus 6, which is equal to 32.4. We've got our new, we've got our increase in price. So, so far this looks fine. We cut supply and the quantity falls and the price rises. So at least at that level that says we might be doing our math right. Don't worry, we are. Now we need to find our next equilibrium. We need our demand shift. Let's see, I did the supply shift where we made supply fall by two at every price. Let's do our demand shift from a different angle. Let's change our willingness to pay at every quantity. Let's say that uh, willingness to pay increases by $11 at every quantity. So what's that going to look like? That's going to look like our new demand curve, PD2 equals PD1 plus 11. Sorry, I shouldn't have said new demand curve. New inverse demand curve equals the old one plus 11. Notice when I made, when I specified my change in a curve by quantity, I wanted to deal with the actual supply curve, which is measured in quantity, and I shifted it by quantity. In this case, I'm changing the price of each quantity. And so I'm gonna deal with the inverse demand curve, which is measured in prices. Prices as a function of quantities. So let's see, this is uh, 50 minus two Q plus 11, which is 61 plus, oops, minus two Q. Put some scripts on there. Okay, those aren't the right scripts. D2 equals PD2. There is our new inverse demand curve. So if I want to solve for this red equilibrium up here, I want to set my new demand curve equal to my new supply curve. And that will give, and the intersection of those is my red equilibrium. So, P D two equals P S two. Uh, let's see, that's three Q plus six equals sixty one Q. Oops, sixty one minus two Q. So five Q is equal to fifty five. Q equals 11. And let's solve for the price that goes with it. I can substitute this into either curve. Let's go P equals three times Q plus six equals 39. So this thing is definitely not the scale. That's okay. But there you have it. We've found two different ways to move our supply and demand curves and how to solve for equilibrium changes when they move. I hope this video is useful to you. If not, too bad you're not getting your time back. But good luck and thanks for watching.